Our next storyteller is no stranger to our stage, mainly because he is a massive repository of crazy travel stories. He is um, an avid diver and an amateur marine biologist, and he speaks three languages fluently. Everyone, please welcome Zach Smith. My hand felt warm and wet, and my crotch was hot, <laughs> and the heat was spreading. I wasn't sure if I was awake or asleep, and I tried to open my eyes, and I could see the blackest, darkest black that I'd ever seen, with little white pin, whitest white I'd ever seen, piercing through it. And I managed to open my eyes, and I realized I was floating on my back in a kayak. And I pissed myself. <laughs> I didn't know where I was. I was lost in the tropical island republic of Palau. <laughs> now, i would seen pictures of Palau pretty much my entire life on dive magazines and in advertisements and even in movies. And when I became a dive instructor, that's the first place I wanted to go. I applied, I got accepted, I flew in, I rented a really nice big apartment because I had this great salary, and I started teaching scuba in paradise. Mm -hmm. And the water was warm, there was coral, there was tropical colorful fish everywhere, there were people flying in from all over the world, and it was really kind of the culmination of a lot of training and many years of, of pushing myself in that direction. Now, I was eating out every night with guests after work. And I was a VIP. I was living large. <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> and then 2008 happened, the Great Recession. And there were no more students. The airport almost closed. There literally just like weren't enough planes coming and going even to just like service the airport. And I realized I wasn't going to be able to continue to pay the rent in this nice apartment. So I asked around and I found a little sailboat that needed someone to kind of boat sit it. And I found out who the owner was, moved on to it. And it had no toilet, it had no electricity, but it did have a little gas cook stove and I was able to lock it and it had a little mattress and it had a pillow. That was enough. Moved on to it, and I borrowed a kayak, and I asked locals like what plants and what fruit I could eat, because there were a lot of things that were not very familiar, and they pointed out which fruits I could eat, and so I started foraging, collecting fruit, and asking what plants, and what's this, and what's that, and I started collecting these things, and bringing them back, and cooking them, and with the kayak, I started fishing, and I saw squid in the water. And I thought, oh man, I'm gonna catch some of these. This is really cool. And I had this special lure, and I was on the kayak, paddling like this, and had the, the fishing pole. And I hooked a squid, and I was pulling it in and pulling it in, and I got it right up next to the kayak. Oh, this is really great. And I pulled it up, and oh! <laughs> just black ink all over, just all over my face, everywhere. And I'm like, shit, I forgot. I'm like, ah, oh, this is a fucking squid. The house. <laughs> you know, the squid's like, ah, get away from me. <laughs> but I got it, and it fell on my lap, and I was just covered with it. It was like someone had dumped motor oil all over me or something. But I had that little fucker. <laughs> and I caught some more, and, I, and later I was on the island walking around, and I told this woman the story of the squid, and she said, she said, you, you can get squid, fresh, not frozen. And I said, yeah, yeah, you can catch them easy. <laughs> she says, I work at the gas station. Come there, we'll trade. 
So I went out, I caught squid, brought it back to her. There was a Baskin Robbins little like freezer thing. It's part of the gas station. When I walked in there, I saw cravings and cream. I looked at that, and I was just, I had a bag of squid, and I was like, I'll give you the squid for a scoop of that. And she was like, okay, sure. And she felt kind of bad for me, because evidently there was a lot of squid in there, fresh, it was just a scoop. So she gave me some cash as well. And I was like, holy shit, man, I've got something valuable here. And so with that money, I bought some hooks, and I bought a bag of rice. And I carried that rice back through the marina bar where I had the kayak. And as I was going through, some people that I used to hang out with a lot when I was making money said, you look really skinny, you should eat more. <laughs> and I couldn't admit to them what had happened to me. I just, I didn't say anything. Because they were sitting at a table and there was a plate of french fries. And I could smell that. And I really wanted to eat it, but it's leftovers. You can't do that. That's just going, that's like foraging in a garbage can for food. So I went back to the boat and I cooked up that rice. And you have no idea how good fresh steamed rice smells when you're hungry. It's just has an amazing smell to it. Normally we just think, oh, you gotta add stuff to it. No, it has an amazing taste all by itself. Now, eating a whole bunch of rice to physically make your stomach full, it doesn't make the hunger go away. It just fills you up. So I was on land again, zooming around. I borrowed a bicycle as well so I could cover more ground. And there were these Chinese fishermen that were always, every time they'd see me, they'd make wah, make wah, right? Come like that. And I learned make means American. And they were always trying to get me to go in this karaoke bar place. And I was just like, it's not my style. <laughs> I was run down, it had Chinese letters on the front. For all I knew, it said whorehouse. You know, I, I just had like, no idea. I'm just like really skeptical. And they wanted to get me drunk. And I'm not really a drinker. You know, I have a little champagne on New Year's Eve, um, drink a teeny bit of beer. But, you know, those beers, that's like 200 calories. <laughs> That's, I mean, fish are lean. They're as lean as I was at that point. I needed that, and I wanted it. And I gave in to the peer pressure. <laughs> so I went in to this weird place, and had a VIP room with a screen, and they had a microphone, and they had all these shots lined up, and all these beers, and they wanted me to sing, and that's why I don't like karaoke. It's, it's <laughs> drinking, which I don't really want to do, and it's singing, and I, I just, I can't sing. I didn't want it, but there was that beer. So, this is what I sang. My, my, Miss American Pie <laughs> Drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. And good old boys are drinking whiskey and rye, singing, this will be the day that I die. This will be the day that I die. That's the last thing I remember. <laughs> so, I'm floating in a kayak. Up Street Creek without a paddle. Not really, I have my paddles. And there's a light hanging off my neck. It's my little headlamp. Oh, that's nice. So I put it on and I turn it on. And I noticed this little pink light, this little reflection, and I'm pretty drunk, but hey, that's kind of cool, let's go see what that is. So I started paddling towards it, and it seems to kind of go away, and so I paddle towards that, and it disappears, and it kind of keeps reappearing, and at a certain point, it kind of stops, and I kayak towards it, towards it, and I get to the point where the end of the kayak is, is almost touching it, it's like five feet away. And there's these little white things all kind of lined up near the pink thing. And I'm looking at it, I got my headlamp on, and the little pink light blinks. <laughs> and it's an alligator head. No. 
and the body is about like that big. I don't know how long the tail is, 10 or 15 foot long saltwater crocodile. And I'm like right next to it, and I'm drunk, and I'm like, hi, and I don't know where I am. <laughs> and so I. <laughs> Paddle backwards, <laughs> didn't get that sign language. And I kind of turn and keeping my eye on it, and it's still king. And as I turn, I, I see the outline of some trees, kind of an island. I realize I'm not that far away actually from my boat. So I slowly start paddling away. And I get back to the boat, I tie it up, I get out of the water onto the boat, and I'm safe. There are some important lessons that I learned. <laughs> wow. One of them is that I can adapt and survive anywhere. The other one is that anything and everyone is part of the food chain. <laughs> but life without ice cream is not worth living. 